News at 4 begins now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Crempton News First at 4. I'm Tom Sherry. Welcome, everyone. Good to have you here tonight. The Spokane Valley shooting suspect who's been accused of killing a U-high teenager was in court today. That suspect is charged with first degree murder for the shooting that happened in March outside of that teen's apartment. Spokane County court documents have revealed several anonymous tips as well as surveillance video helped police identify Stephen Yoler as the suspect who they believe shot and killed 15 year old Preston Grisgoric. Court documents report that a friend close to the victim's family offered a $2,000 reward for information that would lead to the arrest of whoever was responsible for shooting Preston. Sheriff's deputies arrested Kohler just yesterday, or Yoler rather, just yesterday afternoon. The victim's family was at that hearing today. They told Krem2 it was not easy to sit through. It makes me feel sick to my stomach. I just want to like, you know, scream, cry. I just, I don't know, mixed emotions for sure. We're glad that he's caught, but you know, I, I personally don't know if justice will ever truly be served because Preston will never come back. The suspect does remain in Spokane County Jail tonight on a $1 million bond. Yesterday, or today rather, he spoke exclusively with our Amanda Rowley. You can join us tonight at 5 o'clock to hear why he claims his innocence. New information now on Crempty News at 4 o'clock about a bad crash on Dishman Micah between 8th and 16th Avenue. A small sedan collided with a box truck, causing the truck to roll onto its side. The sedan then struck a power pole and crashed through a residential fence. Both the driver and passenger in the sedan suffered serious injuries. According to Spokane Valley Police, the car was stolen and the driver and passenger were taken to Sacred Heart Hospital with serious injuries. The driver of that stolen vehicle is 31-year-old Jason McWork. He's a wanted, convicted felon. Once released from the hospital, McWork will face charges including vehicular assault, unlawful possession of a firearm, and possession of a stolen motor vehicle. The passenger of the stolen vehicle is a 16-year-old boy, also a convicted felon, and police said he is not facing any charges. The driver of the truck had minor injuries and did not need to go to the hospital. Police believe that driving at high speeds and driving recklessly as well as being impaired were all factors in the crash. Dishman Micah between 8th and 16th Avenue is currently closed. Also new at 4 tonight, health officials are investigating a potential widespread COVID-19 exposure in the Colville area. According to the Northeast Tri-County Health District, tournaments and big events were held at Dominion Meadows Golf Course starting back on May 1st. Three people have already tested positive, but they're worried there could be dozens more who may not even realize they're possibly infected. Today, the health district administrator told me that anyone who went to Dominion Meadows on or after May 1st needs to monitor for symptoms now and be on the lookout. They're now working with the golf course to provide COVID testing and vaccination opportunities for anyone who may have been exposed to that virus. New tonight, we're hearing from a Ferry County woman who attended that super spreader event in Republic last month and is now pleading with others to take this outbreak and this virus seriously. Yeah, we're sick of hearing about COVID, but um, that's because we've been hearing about it for a year and a half and haven't really been touched by it until now. It's not about politics, guys. It's legit like our neighbors and our family and our friends are getting super sick and some of them are dying. And that is Natalie Medina. She posted a video on her Facebook page encouraging others to take precautions. She was actually a karaoke DJ at the Eagles recruiting event last month that ended up being that super spreader, infecting more than 100 people with COVID-19. She also contracted COVID. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll hear more of her message and why she doesn't want people to misunderstand what happened there in her community. That story coming up tonight on Crime 2 News at 6. Mm. In the meantime, Tom, we really have to talk, talk about this because it's sure. pretty much uh, what everyone is thinking today. What the heck happened <laughs> from yesterday to today? Because oh, we're freezing out here. We are freezing. It's a <laughs> cold front. That's what's happened. We had showers and thunderstorms, isolated thunderstorms last night. We've had rain today and isolated thunderstorms and incredibly gusty winds up to 30 miles per hour. We'll continue to see this through the evening hours. I am uh, predicting uh, sunshine, though, arriving on Saturday. We'll see high temperatures near 60 degrees. 
and then partly cloudy Sunday seasonal high temperatures, but also a few pop up uh, showers are possible on Sunday afternoon. Look at the radar. Very, very active right now, as you can see with those showers across the region and some pockets are showing some heavy rain down in southern Spokane County. So just get used to this until the sun sets tonight. Then we'll begin to see things begin to quiet down. We're at 57 degrees. Remember this time yesterday we were at 83. Uh, wind is out of the west southwest at 26 miles per hour. As you can see for your day planner forecast, we're looking for an overnight low of 35 degrees. Some of the northern valleys are going to get down to freezing tonight. I know we put the plants in at our house as well. Uh, so we're going to get down to 35 here in Spokane, but northern valleys may get down to freezing. Yeah, you may need to cover up some of those freshly planted uh, plants. Look for a high tomorrow of 61 and then for Sunday I've got chance of a few showers in the afternoon and we'll look for partly cloudy skies and a high of 60 three degrees. Well, it has been a year of what we can't do, but we are celebrating something that we can do for area families, right? The Creme Cares diaper drive is in its final days and with your help, we'll be able to provide thousands of diapers to keep kids warm, safe and dry. Yes, so right now, if you donate $10 to the diaper drive, you will be helping provide a week's worth of diapers and wipes to a family that is struggling mm -hmm. right now. So live at this moment at Rosars is Creme Cheese Laura Papetti and she's got an update now on diaper drive and of course more on how you can help. Hi Laura. Well, hi guys. Hi everyone out there. I, I wanted to show a number right now that we like, we love. Uh, they just slipped us this note here at the Rosars on 29th Spokane South Hill. 615. That's how many bags they have sold here at this Rosars alone, which is more than we've ever sold here before for Creme Cares diaper drive and we are celebrating tonight because the need is bigger than ever. So we know these will all get used. Let me show you what this represents. So these are the diaper drive bags that we're talking about. If, if you've never actually seen them, uh, this year they're not actually filled. They're, they're what we call dummy bags. They're not actually filled with anything. They represent what we will put in them, which is a week's worth of diapers and wipes. And then those will be taken directly to Vanessa Behan. And the reason why uh, we did it this way specifically this year is of course COVID. We're trying to limit uh, touching or exposure or transfer. And so we're keeping it simple this year. Uh, these represent $10 these represent about 50 diapers, which is the national average for a week's worth of diapers. And again, Rosars puts in wipes as well. So that's what a $10 donation will buy. Let me tell you a little bit about the numbers. We've talked about this a lot the past week. Over 170,000 diapers given out last year at Vanessa Behan, and they could have given out so much more. That was because they were holding diapers back because they just didn't have them. So they were giving smaller amount to families as the year went by. So this is our chance to catch up, get these diapers out to the families that desperately need them. Let's face it, nobody, nobody wants to hear a baby crying or know that a baby is uncomfortable and fussy sitting in a diaper uh, that needs to be changed. So this is a way we can take a little bit of stress from the families and give them a little peace. And let's face it, keep those cute babies warm, safe and dry. We love it. So we love these numbers. But we wanted, we would love to double this by the time we wrap up diaper drive uh, coming up on Sunday, which is, of course, Mother's Day. What better way to celebrate a mom than to uh, help one that is struggling and to, to help her kids? No mom wants to keep a baby in a diaper too long. So we invite you to give in whatever way you can. Let me tell you the ways. Number one, you can go to any area of Rosars through this Sunday. You can buy a $10 bag right when you go through uh, the, the grocery line to buy your, buy your items that you need, maybe something special from Mother's Day, and they'll ring you up. You can go to any area Washington Trust Bank, make a donation, cash or check, just let them know it's for the diaper drive. Whether or not you bank there doesn't matter. You can go and make the donation, and you can always go on creme.com. We have a link there for you, boom, you give whatever you can, and we'll translate that into Creme Care's diaper drive bags and we'll make sure those diapers get to Vanessa Behan and are given out to families all over the Inland Northwest. All right, I'm going to wrap it up for here. Send it back to you. Easy peasy, Laura. Thanks so much. And what a perfect finale for Mother's Day Absolutely. Uh, weekend. This is the time. Laura, thanks mm -hmm. very much.
All right, the Oscar Mayer <laughs> Wienermobile apparently rolled this. into Spokane <laughs> this week, and we're going to take you inside coming up next. But first, a fun fact. Did you know this iconic vehicle has been cruising the hot dog highway since 1936? Wow. Yeah. We'll be right back.